In December of 2022, the U.S. Space Force activated its first field command overseas, the very first ever field command of the United States Space Force, and they choose to set it up in South Korea. Obviously, this is an important maneuver which highlights the geopolitical strategy of the U.S. overall, and choosing South Korea to develop an alliance built around the militarization of space is a significant sign of what's to come. Rewind two years before the first Space Force Command in South Korea, and a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, setting up South Korea's very first military communications satellite. A year after that, the chief of the U.S. Space Force was calling for a deeper cooperation between the two countries. And today, South Korea is preparing to spend some $14 billion on improving its on-orbit capabilities. The former Republic of Korea, or ROC Air Force Chief of Staff, General Park in ho has stated the future of South Korea military space focus, quote, Space is no longer a mere area of curiosity. Rather, it has now become a key domain for our national security, and only rigorous preparation will ensure our survival in the future space environment. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. In July of 2023, Hanwha Systems, a leading arms corporation in South Korea, signed a memorandum of understanding with the local government of Jeju Island, which is an island just south of the Korean peninsula, to further develop the space industry. The island government has since supported and sponsored Hanwha to build a space center with the goal of making satellites. The Hanwha Corporation says it will build facilities to produce civilian satellites. Although they do not say so publicly, their satellites would be used for military use since Hanwha has been driving to join the quote, commercial low orbit satellite base communication system end quote, which is to secure the military network using low-orbit civilian satellites. And we can guess that the role and function of the Hanwha Space Center could be expanded to launch the satellites mostly for military spy use. Later in November 2023, North Korea launched a military reconnaissance satellite. A few weeks after that, South Korea launched its first military reconnaissance satellite in December of 2023, again using a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, this time launching from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. And a few days after that, a Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR, was launched on the platform of the Republic of Korea's Agency of Defense Development off the coast of Jeju Island. The SAR is a satellite built by Hanwha Systems. Hanwha said that it acceded to launch its own satellite on December 4th. According to the Ministry of National Defense, quote, based on solid propelled projectiles and orbital entry-based technologies being developed by the National Defense Institute, Hanwha developed projectiles and satellites, end quote. As you can see, the military space race on the Korean Peninsula is getting hot. Now the question remains, why was South Korea chosen to build up the U.S. military's goal of dominating space? To put it simply, if it wasn't obvious enough, to monitor China and Russia more closely. And yes, North Korea is launching rockets and satellites now, but they are merely used as a justification to continue its presence in the South, while the main targets of the Pentagon and the U.S. ruling class are China and Russia. The DPRK has never invaded another country, and although their economy has been relatively stable, it has shown little growth for decades, and their military spending is barely noticeable compared to the U.S. They may have some nuclear capabilities, but anyone with any common sense knows that this is a defensive measure, as North Korea stands out from previously invaded countries like Iraq, Libya, Syria, and many others throughout its history. Countries with nuclear capabilities are more difficult for the U.S. to invade, and the DPRK leadership knows this. 
The U.S.-South Korea alliance is barely an equal relationship. South Korea's economy has grown by huge strides over the past decades, mainly due to the support from imperialist powers such as the U.S. But South Korea's leadership serves imperialism more so than it does its own people. This so-called new alliance for the militarization of space is just another topping on the same old cake forcing the country to choose sides as tensions rise between the U.S. on one side and China and Russia on the other.